All members in attendance, I believe. Um, if Solicitor Sewell could lead us in number three, which is a discussion of the status of the code book review. Of course, over the minutes. Oops, um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of November 24th? Thank you. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposition? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when we last met, I had uh, said that I would do my very best to get through the entire code book in a week. And uh, I managed that. Uh, and um, I'm not going to hold a grudge, but um, what I was doing as I was going through the code book was just listing with no categorization, just listing things that I thought needed to be addressed. And when I kind of ran out of time, what I thought I would do is just break that master list down into sort of categories. And the categories that fell into place were, as you can see, the first one is fees. Uh, because in 2011, uh, the city adopted section 22F of chapter 40, which I believe were you kind enough to distribute to everyone? Is that you, Pam? Uh, Pam was kind enough to distribute to everyone, so you can see uh, how the statute reads and, and uh, the discussion that led up to it, um, led by Council Narkowitz. Uh, so we have a lot of, uh, so chapter 174, as you all know, are, is a schedule of fees in the ordinance book. That should come out of the ordinance book and each department, including I would point out the city council itself, would need to uh, adopt a schedule of fees department by department. Until those fees are adopted in the department, the current fee schedule would, would the, the amount charged for each permit, service, license, whatever it is, would uh, remain in effect. And so that is something that we could have the uh, city council or recommend to the city council to do immediately. It really shouldn't uh, um, take too much time for each department um, uh, to just adopt the schedule of fees that are contained in 174 as their schedule and then make changes as they see fit. Uh, so that's one thing that we can do is to eliminate chapter 174 and um, and um, all of the references to chapter 174, section one, chapter 174 in the other ordinances, and I've kind of listed them all out in, that I found. Uh, maybe somebody can do a, a global search to make sure I haven't missed any of them, but I didn't, I don't think I did a global search. I think I was just doing this pretty line by line and picking up these where I saw them. So okay. that's the first table. The second table is a partial table, and this one also should be doable by the by this uh, committee, and that is just changing recreation to proxy and recreation, changing you know, board of public works to the public works commission, and that would just require sort of um, I think uh, combining your list and, and my list and doing another global search for BPW recreation commission or other. So that's something that can certainly be done. And that's I'm sorry, can you know what does include? Like pl planning would include? It includes just references to committees, boards and committees that no longer exist. Right, so I'm wondering like if, if like, does that include things like planning department, which is now Office of Planning and Sustainability? Um, yeah, that, I mean, I was kind of looking at this as with an eye toward the administrative orders, but if there are references, you know, improper references to departments, that certainly could be included in this. That would make sense. I kind of wasn't keen on that. And I, if, yeah, it, if it's I in there, I, I, if it, I, I read right past it if it's in there. I'm just, I yeah, that would be including know. all, re all, you know, antiquated Senior references. Services. Right, right, and uh, fire so rescue. a good thing to search for, yeah, fire rescue. Yeah, so if the chair can assign that somewhere, uh, yes, I yes, volunteers. I don't mind doing it. You know, oh, thank you. Yep. Now, miscellaneous, the third table, uh, I tried to do this in order of easiest to most difficult. And, um, and even though this is third or fourth, as I said, some of this is, is 
you know, pretty simple. Um, um, you know, we have 120-3 that regulates housing authority property. I don't know why or how we're regulating housing authority property, but I don't think we have the authority to do that. Um, you know, obscene or profane language. Uh, and then you can see that some things were, were done historically in, in reaction to something, like the hawkers of fish, fruit, and vegetables. We could, I, I can imagine that there were immigrants here who were citizens who were hawking fish on the streets and they, you know, they took care of it by requiring citizenship. Or, uh, and you know, I just think that there's a lot of antiquated things there that can be removed. Um, the zones of quiet, Temporary zones of quiet, uh, exemption for zones of quiet for physicians actually in their office. Uh, and some of this needs more thought, but some of it could clearly be eliminated. The subdivision rules and regulations should be out of, uh, uh, did I not put them in? Oh, I did that. What's that? I've been railing about this for three years now that I've been city solicitor and uh, what is that? The, 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 the subdivision rules and regulations adopted by the planning board, Wayne thought that it would be a good thing to put them in the code book because that's where he thought people would but be looking for them. But they're not ordinances, they're regulations of the planning board. And we just saw that there was, I just saw an email from Wayne saying, no, 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 the city council can't amend, right. amend right. those, yeah. those are the planning board. Well, then they got to be they out, there. out of there they, and onto the planning board website. You know, that's what people look for. Planning so, board's rules. if they are not, if they're not supposed to be there anyway, is the council who takes action on that? Does the council, council say to pull it out? Did we ever approve of putting them in? I, I imagine I haven't. Looked or they just have? We did approve of putting them in. Yeah. So they're not getting yeah. in without a council order. So okay, you did. Order. So we would have to take them all out. Yeah, take and that out. was when Wayne emailed me to to tell me that they did not belong there because council didn't have the authority to approve them. Well, he likes having them there, but he does. But but he didn't say uh, he didn't say that to me. But he right. just said that they should, you know. Okay. They do create confusion yeah. being yeah. there. And, well, uh, that should shorten the book. <laughs> shorten the book. <laughs> you think book? And you know, then we have a whole bunch of licenses where the city, the ordinances are telling police and others exactly what to do and how to do it. And those, I think, are going to need more discussion. I think those are going to need, you know, I think we're gonna, someone is going to need to put, you know, some thought into these these issues. Um, what sort what sort of things can I ask? I mean, just for example, if you, if you have. Uh, are you looking at the last, last page? Last page. Yeah, last page. Yeah, I was just going to actually go to uh, that. It's under miscellaneous. Yes. Uh, uh, well, the question is uh, well, let me look at it. Okay. There were a lot of things that had like um, appeals from uh, an executive officer to the city council. Um, so you're crossing, you have an executive department appealing to the legislative department. Um, You're thinking what I'm thinking, aren't you? It's a taxi. It's, 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 a ta it's the taxi. The taxi ordinance has that because it, the taxi ordinance says that if if you want to appeal a denial of a taxi operator's permit, it has to go back to the public safety committee. Which I don't know how the public safety committee could really regulate giving this person a license back if the police department has denied it. Yeah, we had that in 2012. Right. And, and you, had, you have it in 2015. Right. In 2012, mm -hmm. I think it was before the charter, well, the charter didn't even take place that year after yeah. it passed. So, so that was under the old charter. So I'm wondering if that's... And I mean, even though the committee, the, didn't, the, the, the committee didn't give him his license back, I mean, he had, the, the, the person had to wait a couple more months before they could have reapply in August of, of 2012 and it was approved by the police department then 
but that's one of the things well, the taxi ordinance states is that if there's an appeal on a driver that the public safety committee gets to the appeal so is are it you, the, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not a member of the committee, but I, but I have this question because this is coming up and we have a meeting scheduled mm -hmm. for this to happen. Right. Would so if this ordinance is illegal, we shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't be holding that meeting. We, we a few years ago, Chief Sink was denied a, a permit, mm -hmm. a license permit, and pursuant to that ordinance, the appeal came to the Public Safety Committee and to overturn it, and the city and the Public Safety Committee voted 2-2, two -two, so it didn't get overturned. Mm -hmm. because Right. Did pass. Yes. So now we have the same person in the same um, appeal, and so I'm wondering if. if well, I mean, I, I'm, there's got to be I'm some sorry. appeal. So it's either yeah. there's an, either it, the denial is going to go directly to court, or we're going to keep what's in place in place and until we can change it. But I think that this needs some attention. Uh, I'm not sure that so you're, not, so you're not saying immediately get rid of it. You're saying, but we might want to look at it. I maybe think, get rid of it. Maybe not get rid of it. I think this whole chapter 316 needs uh, total revamping. Uh, needs revamping and oh. needs looking at it. It's probably outside the scope of the committee that needs to file a report by the end of the year. Okay. I think the report's going to say that this needs to be looked at, and you know maybe. Uh, the mayor and the, the council president put their heads together and get a, a like a joint committee together to do this and to actually get into the into the heart of some of these things. And I think that if you're going to do that, then you need to bring in the so-called legal licensed companies to come in and and to, to talk so to the committee well. to tell them what the issues are that are going on with the taxi yeah. with the taxi business out there because there's a lot of issues going on. What's the basis for the police department issuing licenses? Is that, does it have to be the case, or is that created? Is this a taxi driver? It's only the driver that they issue. They do a Corey check. They do a Corey check. state law? I think you're asking where the authority yeah, comes state from. State why it, I think it is state law. Okay. But that, that's you know, the first one on Chapter 316, the the city council license is this statutory. I, did, I didn't have a chance to really research these to find out whether this, these are statutory. Right schemes here or whether you know this is this is something that we came up with on our own i'm just concerned that if 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 you're correct that it is illegal under the new charter how that affects whatever decision the public safety committee makes either way well i mean is the public safety committee going to continue after what's going to happen when all the committees get oh consolidated? Uh, uh, well or, it'll another i guess it would fall under the committee who, who has public safety under its jurisdiction if it's not standalone so, um, you know, we'd have to make an amendment to account for the change in committees as well. But I, um, as far as I, I'm concerned, you know, these have been in place. Uh, they continue to be in force and effect until they're, they're revoked. So they're repealed? Right. Yeah. I guess, yeah, so the real answer is if it's illegal, you'd have to take the decision to court and they would have to strike down our ordinance. That's right. We're gonna we're gonna proceed. We're not gonna leave ourselves without the, the ability to regulate and, and your appeals. I would think that the appeals would stay on the on the executive side before they go to court. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no real likelihood that, that would happen. But I just want you know right. point out that's, and, yeah, and that's, the that's truth that's is possibility, you, but not the likelihood. You can yeah. leave no ap appeal route, and then then there's you know this the what we call certiorari the statute that's out there for appeals for all municipal decisions that have no appellate route. Yeah. Like like the wetlands ordinance has no appeal route, you file a certiorari action. And, you, and then you, you're, you're in court. You're in court. Yep, you go right from the denial to court. That's a possibility. So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I haven't gotten far enough along on these to really, to, to the 316, to suggest that we actually try to get these done by the, you know, uh, early in the next term. Can I ask a question? Sure. I don't have it in front of me, but 316, is this where Billiards and Bino is as well? All right. I was trying to see your list. Was it on your list? No, no. I mean, I'm asking, and I don't have the information. It would be it would be where it would be where the junk dealers are. 
um, you know, that, that or the or the second hand dealers, okay. the second hand dealers. That, that's that's where that is. Okay. At the end of the same. Is the billiard uh, the license. one Cindy from my yeah, yeah, and I yeah, are discussing it because we had some questions on it because she is, issues entertainment licenses for mm -hmm. almost the same exact thing and. I issue the, 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 the pool table billiard that we issue is the ones that are not coin operated. She issues the coin operated ones. But that's only for an automatic amusement device. Right. So she'll issue it for an entertainment mm -hmm. too. Yeah, that's 216. So we just had billiards. some questions about it and I don't have it in front of me to yeah. look at I think it. it's under I think it's under um, the under two oh two maybe, um, the the, where junk and secondhand dealers are, I think it might be under there. 316 is vehicles for hiring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can bring that for the next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because if it's redundant, then I mean, I shouldn't be doing. The council shouldn't be approving a license for for um, it packards. Seems for, for packards for a pool table. Well, right. Um, well, how there's there a coin operated yeah. and have our arms? Yeah. Why are some by right. you and some mm -hmm. council yeah. and some are by the license commission? We should consolidate. Yeah, yeah. it just mm -hmm. seemed right. yeah, it's weird. Mm -hmm. unnecessary. Right. Also, are there some things that no longer need licenses, like pool tables? Yeah. I mean, really, is there a basis yeah. for no longer getting out of the business of doing something like that? It seems well, like it. Are they paying fees on them? The license commission ones, yes, yeah. that is probably do substantial. But, but what about like the pool table? Right. That coin operating pool tables are, or not? Are we, are yes, have, those are licensed. Yeah, with a fee. Does they have to but pay a yearly fee for each every one less Or are these licensed because we say that to be licensed? They fall use. under automatic amusement device under state law. But okay. Wendy issues some that are that don't, don't. have coin operated. Right. So and also with the bowling alleys too. Right. Exactly the bowling alleys as well. Yeah. But they all require fees in addition to points. Right. Yeah. They have a weekday and Sunday license uh, for. Uh, the the bowling and uh, bowling and billiard. It's a weekday and Sunday that the council approves. So one twenty four, one seventy four, and one twenty four. So one twenty four governs it, and then its fee is under what seventy four. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that'll be done soon. Okay. And so, uh, continuing on, the last category are, is the most difficult one. And uh, <coughs> this also has some appeal from police chief to city council. Uh, you know, just miscellaneous separation of powers. Now, a lot of these, or a number of these, are going to involve the DPW. And I'm reticent to like add anything more to the DPW's plate at this moment, since you know Ned's gone and they're kind of in a state of flux uh, for the moment, at least. And until things kind of settle down, I would leave all of this the way it is. I don't think we're really going to be able to hash it all out in the next two weeks anyway um, and get a report filed, but. Uh, it's just a lot of issues. A lot of uh, uh, the uh, transportation and parking committee uh, doing more than being advisory, and of course under the, uh, the mayor's executive order, their advisory committee it is a, an executive committee and it is advisory, so the function of TPC and issuing permits and things like that and deciding about, uh, you know, stopping, standing, parking, diagonal parking, uh, that's TPC, uh, there were a few others, bike lanes. Well, do, don't they still do the traffic calming applications? So are they still somewhat? They're uh, according, uh, you know, the mayor can do what, you know, the, you know what he wants. No. Then the council will approve. But uh, as I read the charge of TPC, it is advisory only. Yeah, that's all 
recommendations. I mean, so you recommend? Yeah, in theory, you could install a traffic calming device without any recommendation from the TPC, or okay. if the TPC okay. made a recommendation, of course, the DPW doesn't have to follow. Okay. That's my understanding as well. So you actually have in here all parking meter locations and on street parking, something you would. Well, I think it's something that needs to be discussed. Right. Who is going to assign parking spaces in the city? I try to be comprehensive. <laughs> no, um, I think it's good you know, that you. I, you know, know, I think it's. I think it's happen. worth the discussion. And you know, I'm willing to continue this committee into next year if the if everybody on the committee is willing to serve and 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 the mayor and the president want to keep this going as a non-charter based committee, I'm, I'm happy to try and work through these things as on an ongoing basis. Well, I de definitely believe that we, you know, you're going to have to continue on because, I mean, anything to do with this separation of powers in the charter is going to take time. Yep. And when you're looking at parking, I believe, I, I truly believe, as I've said to you today, that you need to bring in not only the parking clerk's office and the DPW, and you know, and I mean, have them part of this discussion because I mean, you know, they're going to need to know what's what's happening in their departments. And I mean, this shouldn't happen, and then they find out later on that this is now what they're going to have to do. So I think that you know, just to be user friendly with the departments, I think that mm -hmm. the part departments that the departments that it's going to cause a change for them, they should also be here to know that. Absolutely. I also think that. <clears throat> In, uh, in addition to that, is if we're going to bring those individuals mm -hmm. and representatives in, before that we should have a discussion as to whether or not we agree that parking should be assigned yeah. by the mayor. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I understood. I understand that a lot, particularly in this final group. Why the reason that they're on in the fourth group is because there's going to be a lot more discussion about them than. You know, just eliminating fees or changing DPW to the Public Works Commission. So, and, and there's, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But there's a question for the committee as well about what goes in a report because we have a report and we have optionally ordinances that accompany the report. Mm -hmm. And would a discussion, you know, a broader discussion about that belong in this report? Or does that whole discussion happen later? Well, that brings up what the process is we're going to use for this, because another possibility would be if there were <clears throat> agreement on certain ordinances that we take out and there was general agreement, we might do this in stages and send forward all of those that are really easy that we have agreement on, send those to the council, get rid of those. Then there's probably a group that we perhaps need longer discussion on and then perhaps come to an agreement in this group. That could be a second group. I, I would imagine there's going to be another group where we might make uh, have the discussion of pros and cons, but send it on, and it's going to have to be discussed in other venues, bringing in departments, and then bring having this discussed on the council floor. But I would see doing this in stages rather than do a report, because that then we have to wait for everything to be done. And uh, if, if we're required to do a report, though, are we required to do a report? Because if so, we could we are required. Okay, so if so. The report could say, here's what we recommend mm -hmm. with attached ordinances, and we could also recommend further discussion for right. the yeah, issues right. that aren't as easy. Yeah, which we could do that. Which carry to the next year. That was my intent, separating them this way. Ah, yeah. I thought right. that That's the fees we could right. tackle, I think that if somebody can do a, uh, you know, a global search for the different departments, we can yep. deal with that kind of easy administrative stuff. And then you know, pick out some of the things in the third table. By the time you get to the fourth table, I don't think we're doing any of the fourth table uh, for two reasons. One is it, it's something that is when we suggested we need to get departments in and and, uh, and you know get their input. Uh, number two, there's not going to be agreement, and we're going to have to work through you know those things that we can agree on, those that we can't. And the third is that I really don't want to load any more on the DPW, but a lot of that fourth, that fourth table is going to be uh, involved the DPW. Uh, I, 
I mean, are, I know they're in flux with the director, but is there, is there someone who, who, who they can designate to, to review this stuff? Or, or is it going to be just without the director, just too overloaded? Uh, I would be hesitant to give them that right now. Okay. With okay. Knowing that all of them are absorbing a lot of that work okay. right now. Okay. And also, since there's no I mean, we've been running on this for decades, so there's no real rush to do it as long as we get to it. I do think we need to get to it, though. I just, yeah. These are the kinds of things, you know, the harder the job, the easier it is just to, to avoid. We can put down our recommendations as well. That the DBW matter should be looked at at a later date, if necessary. And you know, maybe if this committee is going to go on, that yeah. we're going to identify some departments that need to be represented on the committee and actually bring some department representatives into the committee. That might make sense. I think DBW is the number right. one, exactly. maybe the one and only. Can I ask a very minor question? Uh, I will no longer be on the council. Yes. Are there going to be other members, citizen members of this committee? I'd be happy to stay on it, but if I can't be, then I'm happy to not be on it. Well, <laughs> uh, I think the mayor and I council uh, would need to discuss the, Well, yeah, the mayor and the president would need to figure out what they're going to do, and okay. I would. Well, I believe the president appointed the, the council members, right? So I think. The president would be on point or close well, but, but, or, or if it's or if it's allowed that, that as a citizen you can continue on it. I don't know the answer to that question. I, I mean I think we go out of existence, right, by ordinance. But I think we could have a our new select committee model. We could have citizen members and we could have city employees mm -hmm. virtually the same. So you could or it could be a joint committee between a joint select committee with the mayor and the and the council president. I guess I'm asking well, how is this committee where did this come from? Was this uh, the charter? The charter. It was from the charter yeah. and on the charter. And ordinance. Mm -hmm. The charter called for an ordinance. Right. I'll look at the, and, and then the ordinance probably has who's on the committee, and it may be that there can't be citizen members on that. So there we'd have can. to rewrite it. Yeah, there's two. <coughs> there's two citizens. Citizen Maza. Are those the two? Citizen Maza. Citizen. 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 Yeah, right. I won't fight you for yeah. the position. <laughs> but, but, you know, once this goes out of existence at the end of this but then year. Then it could be re. You know, then it could be done okay. in any model that the, the, you know, the mayor and the council president want to do it. You know, they can do a joint select committee and okay. put more people on it and, you know, a greater number of uh, okay. citizen participants. Yeah, I want that many people on it. Then it gets kind of muddled yep. if you get too many people on it. We'll never get anything done. This could have two councilors and three uh, citizens. Citizens, yeah. So, in terms of what we may do, I mean, are we looking at basically fees and renaming, fixing some of the names? Okay. And then cherry picking some of the third yeah. list um, above the, the right. chapter 316, just pick off some of these okay. that are, are less controversial and, and easy to deal with. Well, on, on fees, because that's kind of like the biggest bulk of what we may do, I suppose. Are there any cities that have some language about how that's handled? Because I guess my concern is, I guess that's what you accept when you accept um, whatever chapter 174. But my concern is fees are now set administratively. I mean, what kind of a, can we create an accountability mechanism or an appeal mechanism or some kind of involvement? Um, or the, the council? council? Yeah, I mean, if in fact our job is to set like basic policy, can we set a fees policy? You know what I mean? It's supposed to just totally withdrawing from from fees. Could they do something like any fee that was going to raise more than three percent or something? I, I, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, well, especially like I mean, building department or whatever. I mean, right. you know, if they have free reign of raising their fees, and I mean, it's just. And the other issue is making sure that you know who the accountability of making right. sure that they're available to the general public. Right. I mean, you look at the city's website now, and I mean, I can't even find the the the, the tax rate anywhere oh, on the city website. Them, uh, yeah, it's not even there. So I mean, you have to have you have to have the departments accountable mm -hmm. for their website if you know because otherwise this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the public is going to be angry over it if they can't figure out mm -hmm. where how much it's going to cost them to. You know, for a document or mm -hmm. you know, I have a, to a say that if, if I were a lay person in the public, having you know, 
no municipal experience mm -hmm. and just coming and trying to figure out fees. So if I had to go to chapter 174 and start looking through chapter 174 <laughs> and figuring out where yeah. my yeah. fee is. They wouldn't do that. They, they wouldn't do that. I think yeah. it's yeah. much better yeah. to go to the clerk's website mm -hmm. and you know, once a year, you're not gonna change fees more than once a year. Tops, you may not. I mean, in my department, no, but I mean, I don't know about anybody else. And, and you know, I'm gonna be quite clear to these departments mm -hmm. that they don't have free reign to just raise fees because when you excessively charge excessive fees they're called taxes and that I mean the whole Emerson College versus City of Boston case the landmark case is about what is a fee what is a tax and when fees are not pegged to the actual administrative cost of providing the service or providing the permit or providing whatever it is yeah. the department is <coughs> providing it's illegal it's a tax um, the stormwater fee. La, 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 la. <laughs> I'll defend that one later. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm dying mind. to hear you defend. <laughs> dying to hear. It is a concern because the concern with stormwater is that you're not really providing a service. Yeah. I mean, what is the service you're providing to the individual landowners you're you're charging? And it is a concern. So, if you aren't solicitor, you would take that case. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to put that on no. tape. <laughs> He's not going to answer that. <laughs> I, I, I take that question back. Yeah. Anyway, I'd be, I would be interested if maybe it doesn't happen if other cities have global policies about fees. Because, in fact, I mean, from what I read in the document Pam distributed, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we do, in theory, even though they all have to be reasonable, we could override um, in a, a department setting of fee. Right, we still have that ability. Not like we would, I would imagine, is doing it very often, but we still have some authority over fees, don't we? Nope. So if you look at the last bullet in the Department of Local Services memo, um, number six, you know, this does not divest the city or town of the power to overrule a fee setting decision by a board or officer or to act to, to set such fees in the absence of action. Um, really not here nor there, but just in general, I'm wondering if there's any wisdom to looking at fees, a uh, fee policy that the city council has. And there may not be, but I see that, for example, when we talk about taking parking out of the legislative side. You know, I can see you definitely need some kind of citizen appeal or, or process there. So I'm just asking the question mm -hmm. about fees. Well, um, I've never seen it happen that a, that a town meeting or city council overrode fees. Mm -hmm. uh, before that happened, if the fees were excessive and they weren't pegged to the you know the actual administrative cost, it would be it would behoove the mayor to step in. I mean, this these are his employees who are doing this, and so the accountability runs up the, the chain to the mayor. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the reasonableness that sort of restrains and keeps it. In yes. Order. Oh yes. And but the well, it sounds more than it sounds like more than reasonableness that you have to prove that those fees are used for the specific cost. Right. But there's there's not dollar for dollar. You know, gotcha. it's a it's a, bear it's a broader. It's it, a you know it has some, it's some reasonable relationship to the actual cost of providing the service. But you have to come in and and defend that way. You have to be able to say, look, for us to give an elect electrical permit, this is why right. we charge right. this amount. We have an inspector who goes out, we pay him this amount, right. we have to produce that. We had a fee coming up, very rarely used, but I remember a big discussion. Citizens wanted to have uh, uh, resident-only parking on Kensington yeah. Street. We had a big discussion, and Wayne said that's gonna be $25 a year, and they went nuts. And he laid out exactly why it probably didn't, the $25 probably didn't, didn't cover enough of the administrative cost. So you've gotta be able to make the case. Right. Right, in a reasonable way, which then could yep. be debated. But, but it's reasonable is determined by the court, right? I mean, ultimately, unless the council, unless unless there's an appellate process in the council, reasonableness is, is, is determined by the court. I mean, didn't Florence Hardware have an issue years ago where they with the yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That, that got stricken because with the fire department, yeah, just the fire department that it was too high that the fee that the fire department it was charging for inspection wasn't that what it was? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I and mean, we had this conversation. I had this conversation with some department heads already. When the fire department changed its fees, we had this Which conversation. Which didn't do it according to the, because there was an ordinance in the code book and they, they didn't do anything with the ordinance in the code book. They arbitrarily were charging what they 
wanted to charge and not according to what the code book said and that was the problem because the code book said one thing and they were charging something else. But, oh. but, but the code book doesn't apply because the council and the mayor already accepted 22F. We've accepted 22F. Right, right. Yeah, this was prior before to that. Oh, before 2011. Yes. I'm talking about since because yeah. Uh, there's been a whole revamp of the yeah. fire department fees yeah. and there were all these emails going back and forth and I was clear you know we're talking about all of this great stuff about raising revenues mm -hmm. just peg it to the cost of providing the service mm -hmm. uh, you know and and some of these are, are set by statute so they're just they're set by statute those have been exempted from the from 22f but does that mean that does that mean that there's the only recourse of a, a challenger to a fee and whether or not it's reasonable has is, is to the courts because it would be nice if there was some other, you know, if there was, if, if they could, it would be nice for them if they had the option of appealing to another public body rather than having to go through the court process. Well, I think that the, the, I think someone would first go to the mayor and say, do you know that your department is charging this unreasonable fee? What I don't want to happen is we create this appellate process so somebody who thinks that you know uh, you know an electrical permit should cost forty five dollars not seventy five dollars and then we're spending a, a lot of time on the forty five versus seventy five and you know well but, but in that case it would be better, better for the city to have the council decide rather than to have that litigated as well it'd be better for both sides you know if a person had to go to the mayor and the mayor ultimately decided the mayor said the mayor agrees and then the only recourse at that point would be to challenge the court. That's right, and I don't see there's any role for the council to overrule the decision of an executive. But by law, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Why, why, I mean, is well, by law, I'm just asking if you mean that, by law. Yeah, as a separate issue of powers yeah. matter, how does the, what order would you issue? You would issue, the council issues an order to a particular right. department head to lower its fee? Oh, Matt, what does it mean when this says it does not divest the city or town of the power to overrule a fee setting decision by the board? I, I don't know what that means. I'm going to have to look at that. Okay. Please do, because that sounds like a very yeah. plain language thing to me. And on the other end, before we get to the appeals, you know, besides just the amount of a fee, what about a notice, public notice period? Could we pass a law that said you're going to change the fee, provide, you know, like a hearing at least so people know on the front end? Could we pass a law like that? Would be would that be advantageous? Just food for thought. You know. Is that is that a role for the council? Tell me again. I'm sorry. I was well, wrong. so we're talking about the appeal process, but on the front end, on the other end, before a fee is changed by the mayor, could the council pass a, uh, an ordinance governing generally how fees are set and require, for example, a hearing or some kind of notice? You know, a hearing by whom? Uh, I suppose by the mayor. Or the, the department setting the fee um, for the public to comment. I suppose that the uh, um, I suppose the council could pass an ordinance requiring an open comment period before fees are changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think it should be tied to a certain percentage increase. Then. Yeah. Like, it's about. I was looking back through all this stuff, and in 2010, the Board of Public Works changed the trench permit fee from $25 to $250. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know why, but to me, that uh, increase that much should have had a lot more conversation. And I'm glad that the charter has changed them setting fees like that. So hopefully, once we get further away from people remembering how fees used to be set, I think people will be more comfortable with departments setting fees themselves, but I think we're still too close right. to that having happened. But going from 17 to 20, you know, I, right. it just right. gets yeah, cumbersome. Yeah, right, that's right. A good point. Yeah. right, and that's you know, it's as if you're saying there's a there's presu it's presumptively it's presumptively reasonable if it's under five percent or something like right. something like that. Right, right. But, but understand that you know, uh, you know, Lynn picked out one egregious right. example. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of fees in this right. city, and I mean, you know, this is anecdotal. I don't think that right. you're going to find that kind of jump in fees very often. I don't know if you've seen that. No, and I think, I think on the public end of it, now that that was a historical department that used to do stuff like that, and people had yep. no input, and I think as we get further away from them setting their own fees 
the, the board, I'm saying, and it having more of a department process with the right. overview of the mayor, that people won't be so nervous about that happening. So I think I would agree that there should be some place where there needs to be an ordinance that says then it has to be reviewed. But I would make that pretty high, and I think that's yeah. what you're saying. And I, think I, I would make it, it, so I'm not talking about 5%, I'm talking about 50%, uh, something that would that really looks very dramatic. And here's the reason, I, see, I'm more of eliminating as much as we can in terms of making all of these things written in law, because we have something which is called an election. And if a mayor allows departments to do something like that, I trust that you do that a few times and get people angry enough, that's why you have an election. The only reason I could see keeping some of this in the council, which I don't agree with, I don't think it should be, um, or you're saying it can't even legally be, but is because it kind of diffuses the, the political process in a way. But that's the same reason from why a lot of this started in the first place, like um, because when Ray Labarge used to talk to me back when he was first elected, thought I was an okay person, Ray used to tell me all these stories, and the stories would be all about the old days, Councilor Specter, when you know you could just get the city to plow or say, hey, we're going to lower the fee, and the council would step in and have discussions. So I'm talking about two different things here, I guess, but one is, even though I might not even agree with having the council um, step in in any way, if they did, I would want it to be very dramatic threshold to say, you know what, we need a place to look at this. Okay, yeah, and then the, then the department could simply justify it publicly, and, yeah. and, well, and, that's, and that's the accountability right. portion. This is covered in the mayor's administrative order, fee setting. It's in the administrative order, and I think that the mayor perhaps should amend the administrative order to have some process by which um, everything flows up to the mayor and um, you know that any fee increase over a certain large percent something like Lynn you know something dramatic like Lynn picked out um, would require mayoral approval you could even do all of these any fee change requires mayoral approval and so then you're you're bringing it up to the person who's responsible and who does, against does, whom it makes it even clearer. the voters will take their revenge if they are upset about. It. I mean, I, I agree somewhat, but the mayor asking the mayor to um, review uh, a fee that a department has raised is like you know asking you know the police department to review its own procedures. I mean, there's, there, the, 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 the the council that's the council is a is a is an independent branch, and so it, it'd be, I think, a more meaningful review than if you know the boss the boss reviewed one of his supervisors' um, fees, as opposed to a different branch of government reviewing, reviewing the fees. And it's that it's that thinking, I think, that has created the ordinances where, for example, the taxi cab appeals come to the council rather than the mayor. Mm -hmm. Right, but um, if what Paul says is true that this is a political issue and, and there's a political accountability. There's less political accountability in the council because it's diffused. The mayor is a single focal point and it's, these are his employees who are doing unreasonable things and that's why it's being appealed or, or, or that's why it's being reviewed because of the potential for an executive employee to do an unreasonable thing. And if an executive employee is doing an unreasonable thing, it's up to the mayor to There's an executive employee. There's an executive employee. We're just talking about you. <laughs> 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 Better you than me. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and then it's up to the mayor. Because the mayor is the one who's going to take the hit if, if uh, his or her employees are acting unreasonably. I disagree because the mayor has four-year terms and the council has two terms. There's less opportunity for accountability for the voters to even vote on the mayor, so I, I just don't share that perspective. I, I also think that, oh, I'm sorry. No, go. I think, I think I just spoke for you, so. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I would hope that raising of fees would be tied to the budget process with departments so that mm -hmm. they would present their fee schedule and say have to defend why they mm -hmm. need an increase, mm -hmm. or the mayor can say, this fee is so low, why is it this low, and mm -hmm. we should look at increasing it or something. So. I, I think to some extent it belongs with the budget process. That's a good point. Although it could be foreseeable that 
there might be a fee that needed to be raised like very soon outside of the budget process. But 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 I But the mayor, I mean, under 22F, that can be done. I mean, I don't know what role you were suggesting for the council. Are you suggesting a role whereby somebody appeals to the council, or are you suggesting that all fees be reviewed by well, the council? I think a good compromise would be that we create a law, like well, what Ryan suggested, which is there would be if a certain increase occurs. I mean, that increase could be large or it could be small, it could be determined. Okay. But if it occurred, it just triggered the opportunity right. for the community to be heard. Right, no, exactly. And, and I was saying, by the way, that in a way this is a sort of political decision for the council. It may not be a decision this committee should make. The decision of this committee, unless we all like agreed on this issue, then we should, it should be part of a recommendation. Otherwise, yeah. we're stopping at these don't belong in the ordinance because of a law we affirmatively adopted. But then later, I would suggest, I mean, I would be interested in working on that and bringing that forward to the council. And then the council can make a political decision of whether to pursue a fees ordinance, which it sounds like under certain circumstances might be appropriate. And we really do need an interpretation of the language that you read out. Yeah, I would be interested in that, yeah. yeah. yeah I was just trying, when, when I wasn't listening, the one occasion that I wasn't listening when, <laughs> when Ryan was talking, yeah. I was trying to go through the statute and see where in the statute. I saw it in the bullet point. But I don't see it in the statute. No, I saw that, but I don't see it in the statute. Uh, so I'm wondering where they got that from. You know, it does say that in the case of a board or officer appointed by an elected board. So if you had a, a board or office, you know, you were appointing the person making the decision, um, you could override it. You know, and, and the fixing of, of such fee shall be subject to the review and approval of such elected board. But we don't have an elected board with, for the department. It's an elected mayor. He's not a board. And so, you know, I think that the intent here is for the appointing authority to be the authority that reviews the fees that the appointees of that authority uh, imposes. And so. But I will, I'll follow up and I'll call over to uh, whatever department issued this bullet point, see if I can find out what they were intending by that. And this certainly wouldn't preempt like the Board of uh, the Committee on Public Works, the Council of Committee on Public Works. So the Public Works, uh, Board of Public Works raises their fees. The mayor approves the raising of that fee. We could put that on the agenda for that committee to have a public discussion about this. Now, we don't have authority over that discussion, but we certainly have a bully public. We can certainly say we disagree with this unanimously and we disagree with the mayor. Right. We have no authority to change it, but we can raise the political issue that we think this was you know, I, outrageous. I think it's the best of all worlds for the council because the council gets to be, the councilors get to stand up and criticize and, and be the the representative of the people who are the voice of the people, and you don't actually have to make any decisions. All you have to do is criticize. Yeah, Jane, it wasn't my decision to raise, yeah, I know the party fee went up. Yeah, I really, I agree with you completely yeah. on that, but I have no authority over that. Thank you. <laughs> call, call Lynn at the mayor's office. <laughs> Can we rewind that tape? So that <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, it's, it's really the accountability thing. Like, you know, when we decided to approve the stormwater flood control fees for, for you know, the council, that didn't do our, our, us any favors whatsoever. But you know, it was an accountability thing, and so it was important. So I think along the same lines as with respect to this situation. So I just wanted to point out that I did post this with an end time of 4.30. Mm -hmm. And you have your next meeting scheduled for the 17th. So it's from 4 to 5 over in the city council chambers. So we may, have, we may have one ordinance to consider at next meeting, right? That just kind of changes, fixes the names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll reverse the order here. Maybe I thought fees was going to be relatively uh, uh, uncontroversial, but it was. I think taking it out is, in, we have to. Right. 
But what we, if we replace it with anything, I, agree. I think that's more I think that's what you were saying, that yeah. we, we are going to take it out, but part yeah. of what we might write in a report is, we may or may not, that there was discussion about yeah. adding an ordinance, and here were some of the possibilities, but right. I, from what you're saying is we have it. We actually don't have any jurisdiction over this. That's my view. I need to follow up on okay. that, that bullet point. But does everyone agree that that's a consensus that the fees do need to be taken out? Whether or not some other ordinance or mechanism needs to be in place? Yes. I mean, today I would say yes. I would want to hear more about, you know, if you talk to DLS and Okay, should, then, then maybe we should postpone this till our next meeting. Yeah, I will okay. talk to Kat, Kathy Cleary down at uh, Division of Local Services. Right now. She's one of the lawyers down there. Maybe at the next meeting we can um, figure out when we're going to make our final report. December 31st. Well, right. No, I understand that's the deadline. But <laughs> that's, that's, the day. Want to, that's what it's going to be. No, I understand that that's the deadline. But I, but I mean, you know, when we're going to finish it in. in, in and when it'll be presented. Can it be presented in the next council as long as it's finished by the December 31st? I think it would be transmitted by December 31st. That's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. Okay, so we should figure out if it's possible because we're coming up on you know holidays that right. our next meeting might have to conclude it. So if so, we should, we should be prepared. Who's gonna write the report? We should vote on or the chair should designate someone, but we need at least two more meetings, right? One to look at, well, maybe, I guess just one. And if that's the case, at the next meeting, we need to bring a draft mm -hmm. so we can edit it in the committee and agree upon it. You know what I mean? This can be a short report. There's nothing that says how long. I mean, this, we don't have a lot in this particular report. I mean, we're talking about when we finish this because we have so many discussions. I mean, basically, one of the things the report could say is that discussions will continue about this and this and this, which is almost everything, it sounds like, unless we come to some agreement on fees next time. I, I go out on the limb. I, I move the chair designate someone to write a draft report that can be brought to the next meeting for consideration. I, I would encourage the chair to designate Brian as that person to bring the report. Who's Brian? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> I have someone else in mind. <laughs> Me? Well, I'm not sure what to write at this point. Yeah, I don't know what, to what I would write. Yeah. I, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think we're ready to write anything yet. I actually don't. There's nothing. We don't have anything there. Are, uh, are people on you know, leaving right town at any point soon? <laughs> for any, you know, for holidays? It's I like, might now. <laughs> <laughs> because if, if that's the case, it doesn't. I mean, I don't think the likelihood is that we would. The likelihood is that we can't conclude next meeting and need another one. Okay. Or not? Maybe we can try it, but I just kind of want to be prepared. Yep. Well, the thing I have, that I have going on at the end of this month is that I, my son's in from abroad. I haven't seen him in a year. He's coming in. Uh, and so I was hoping to not be yeah. as busy heading toward the end of the year. But you know, what, is, right. what is that? Because we don't, we don't want to do that to you. Know. Well, he, I, he's coming in this weekend. Is he a good writer? <laughs> <laughs> the, it's a bonding the, thing. <laughs> the bare bones thing, we, we don't even need to produce ordinances according to the ordinance that sets up this committee. We could have a one-page letter that would be our report, and all these right. things that we worked on next year. But that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, the sure. point is that, right. that there are any number of ordinances that need attention, including that's these right. categories of ordinances that need attention, that we recommend all that there be a, a, a select committee, joint select committee of the mayor and the council and citizens, um, and perhaps department, or we could just yeah. work. We could work on that next committee. Meeting. That's what if I we're going to do. Something do that. like yeah. that. We could just work on it that meeting because, I mean, for, we only had a month or whatever. To and, do and there might, meeting. and again, there might be something very. There might be something specific we could recommend in that one because we do have the name change. There might be something else specific, but it could I, be a I, simple I think that if, if we're just going to provide broad categories, we can. Yeah, um, I mean, you can pick up the antiquated titles. I mean, you can talk about. You mm -hmm. know, we can get those. Yeah. Right. 
you know, listed out there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think that the most that we're going to get done in a month, and I think it's been, that would be a, that'll be a peculiar, peculiar effort uh, in a month. I thought it would take me a month to get through the code book. <laughs> um, we took out a lot. Yeah, we did. Um, last year. Well, last yeah. year we, we did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you took out a tremendous amount yeah. last year. So, okay. the solicitor brings a, just a simple cost. draft letter for us to review. And this is next week, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, you pretty much have so, done it already. I mean, so if you don't think so, we, could, we could possibly could do it to me. Uh, I think that it would be so that we ought to have, like, a template to work on. We ought to have something okay. that we're working it can on. It be very on. simple. Yeah, very it simple. It will be. And then, Jesse, you and I can work on it from there. We're used to working. So we'll, we'll do a job. How about that? Okay. Come to my house and we're trained and write. Like how we did the, like so how this class. Out, right? <laughs> right. yeah. You write it and I change a word or two. Yeah, you don't have one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, is there anything else? Is there a new business? Um, motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.